Hi everyone, Rich Crescenta here with another in our series of videos, Making Music with Melodyne, and today we're going to be discussing transitions. Now, in my opinion, transitions are one of the most powerful and underutilized tools that Melodyne gives us, and that's a shame because they're one of the best ways to add nuance to a performance, and also one of the best ways to ensure that you get smooth and natural pitch correction. All right, so let's dive in and take a look at this right here, right? If you're looking at my screen, you'll see these gold lines that go from one note to the next. And if you've worked with Melodyne before, you've seen these. These are our transition lines. And there are three types of transitions. There are pitch transitions, like what we see here. There are formant transitions, and then there are also amplitude transitions. And we'll get to the latter two in a minute. For right now, we're just going to look at pitch transitions. And they have to deal with how one note transitions into the next. And if I hover my mouse right over where one note becomes the next, you see this little X icon. That's the transition icon right there. Now what I can do is I can take that and make it very, very smooth and gradual for a slow transition. Or I can make that line very vertical for a very, very fast transition. And this can soften or exaggerate an entire performance, right? Let me give you an example just on these vocals right here. I'm going to make all of these transitions very vertical and we get So here I am letting you in one more time. Okay? Let's see how that sounds with very smooth and slow and natural sounding transitions. So here I Okay, now that's a subtle difference there, but in the context of other vocals, that may be more obvious, but it still makes a difference in the performance. It's the difference between a performance that punches through a little or a performance that floats back a little, and it changes the dynamic. It changes the mood, the vibe of the performance. All right, but let me show you a place where this often becomes more useful for me, and that is when I do some pitch correction that's more than just nudging from one note to the next, right? By the way, this song is called September. It's by Mary Solberg. And let's listen to this first verse right here and just hear how the first verse starts. Like daisies in the spring. Okay, cool. Maybe I want to change that melody a little bit, right? I'm going to take this note that is the F and drag that up to the A sharp right there. Let's give this a listen. Like daisies in the spring. Okay, now I like that melody better, but it's starting to sound a tiny bit artificial right here. This is where we can use transitions to help that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take this transition and make it a little bit more immediate and take these two transitions and do the exact opposite. Make them a little smoother and a little more gradual. And now we get... Like daisies in the spring. Okay, I like that. That's a big improvement. Great. Now, let's move on to another type of transition that I want to show you, which is the formant transition. So if we switch to our formant tool and we look at this, you'll notice we no longer see all the gold lines. Now, with formant transitions and with amplitude transitions, you cannot adjust them until a note has been edited. So you won't see those gold lines until you alter the formant or the amplitude. Let me give you an example of this, right? In this case, I moved this note up three half steps. So one way that I like to correct that when I do some really aggressive pitch changing like that is I'll drag the formant back down just a little bit because I feel like it more closely mimics the way a person might have actually sung that. All right, let me give you an example. Let's listen to it the way that it is. Like daisies in the spring. Okay, and then if I bring the format down on that note I edited, back down about a half step, we get... Like daisies in the spring. That's an improvement, and now we see the gold lines for our transitions, and now I can make those transitions very, very smooth and natural. And again, to me, this is more closely mimicking 
what would happen if a person was actually singing, the way that they would change their mouth shape through this. Now we get... Like daisies in the spring. Very nice. I like the way that's sounding. That sounds very smooth and natural to me. Okay. Let's move on to our third type of transition, which is the amplitude. And I want to use this on this last word right here, spring. Let's hear how it originally sounds. Like daisies in the spring. Okay, I like the way that word dies away, but I want it to be even more breathtaking. I want it to die away even further, right? I really want it to be dramatic how it dies away right there. So I'm going to drop this in amplitude. I'm going to drop it by about 8 dB. And if you look up at the top right here, you can see how much I dropped that amplitude. Now let's give it a listen. Like daisies in the spring. Okay, I really like the way that note dies away at the end there. It really pulls you in as a listener. But the, the drop-off is too abrupt. Transitions again to uh, the rescue, right? I'm going to come to that transition. We now see this gold line since I've altered this amplitude. Come over here to my tool and make that a very smooth and gradual transition. And now we get like daisies in the spring. Mm. I might even go a little further with that. Like daisies in the spring. Yeah, I like that. That really just pulls you in and it sounds very delicate, which is exactly what I'm looking for from this performance. Now, I want to pause for a quick second before I show you one last really cool thing and talk about one of my favorite features of Melodyne, which is the way that the undo system works. Now, you can do Command Z on a Mac or Control Z on a PC to undo step by step. However, what if I wanted to undo the pitch of this note without changing what I've done into this note? Melodyne to the rescue right here. If you right click on anywhere, you get your context menu. If you'll notice, I come over here to pitch and we've got restore original. So I could go back to the pitch center, the original pitch center. I could come over here to my formant and go back to undo the formants or undo the transitions. Now, for some bizarre reason, uh, if you go to the main tool, this is where you find the undo for the pitch transition. It's not under the pitch tool. Not a big deal, it's just kind of in a strange place, but there it is. And you can undo anything. You can undo amplitude, you can undo time changes, and the ability to undo just one facet of your edit without losing the other changes that you've made is a very, very, very powerful tool. Okay, now there's one last really cool thing that I want to show you which is a favorite trick of mine, and I use it a lot to control vibrato in a performance. So let's listen to this right here, right? At the second, uh, second line of this verse, we get... You come back in full blossom. All right, right there on that word blossom, I like the vibrato, but I want a little more of it. Now, as I showed in an earlier video, I could come over here to my pitch modulation tool and drag that up, and we get... You come back in full blossom. Okay, now I made it more obvious, but we're also veering here into a note that's not really in the key of the song. And I really want this to be like a magical moment on this. So let me show you an alternate trick that we have, right? If I right click on this note and come over here to my note separation tool, you'll see separate notes as trills. If I click that, it separates this note wherever it trills like that into different notes. Now this only applies to notes that have a lot of natural vibrato in them to begin with. But just so you know, it's a very cool tool to separate these. So now what I can do, right, is I can come over here to my pitch tool and I can select these notes and drag them to here and double click them and then select these notes and drag them to here and double click them. And now what I've done is I've made sure that I have the vibrato, but it's between two notes that are in the key of the song. Check this out. You come back in full blossom. Uh, that's very nice. But here's another place I want to use transitions. I want this to be really, I want this vibrato to really be hammered home. So I'm going to select all of these, come to my transition tool, and make all of those lines very vertical. So the vibrato is very obvious. Let's take a listen. You come back in full blossom and 
great. Now I've made that vibrato go back and forth between two notes that are in the key of the song, and I made it very obvious. I feel like it blends really well with the keys right there. Very nice, very musical changes using transitions. Hope you've enjoyed this today. Thanks.